Many of you speculated this would happen, and it did. It's game over for Tom and Giselle. They both released, released statements confirming they are divorcing. TMZ says Giselle is the one who filed. Now on Instagram, Tom wrote that after 13 years of marriage, he and Giselle have finalized the details of their divorce. And he also added that the separation is amicable. In the post, he said that while the decision is painful, they wish the best for each other and will continue to work together in raising their two kids. Now, Giselle posted saying she and Tom had grown apart but feels blessed for the time that they had together. Are we surprised and is this more than just football? You know, a lot of people speculated that because he's the most sacked quarterback, she was more concerned for his health. Well, he's the most sacked quarterback because he played the longest, to put that into perspective, yeah, right? So years, yeah. he's 45 years old, quarterbacks maybe last to their late 30s. So that's the perspective that's that we're talking about. Yes, yes. So that's, that's fair. That's a fair thing to do. Right. Say, yeah. So to take that out. She's but, still trying to get invited to your Halloween party. <laughs> yeah, that's never happening. <laughs> <laughs> you got ghosted. <laughs> Good Halloween fun. pun. All right, so back to Tom and Giselle. So it's not all football. She put that out there. It's not all football, okay? That's part of it. The relationship just didn't work out. I don't think we know all the details, even though everyone wants to speculate that they do. And it, just watching sports and being a Tom Brady fan, it's coming out in his play. A lot of people might say he's Definitely. older and things, but just his reaction, his fire, it it looks like it's going out. You never want to put Don Brady out, but it, just watching him yesterday, yeah. it didn't look That's like it was I there, keep right? At now, when I watch Tom Brady games, it used to just be his completion percentage, but now I just look at his face. Yeah. And I, you just know he's a human being, and we've all gone through family tragedies. And, you know, I, I looked at, I was watching the game last night, and I was thinking, I think some of the anger, obviously speculative, is that he chose football. There's a reason why people have to work into their 70s, because they have to financially. When you no longer have to work and you're still playing football on Thursday night, rather, kids are in high school. And I think his wife was like, we, had to just, we made, a, we made a, a promise that we would stop playing. You're still playing, and I'm gone. And in a way, weird way, we keep talking about them. What must their kids think? I know. Because dad could be home. Mm -hmm. Dad could and, be and home. And just, I'm not trying to attack. I'm just saying financially. And I will just say, could. add to that, he could be home and not, like, my dad is was a, is and is still a workaholic, and people can relate to that. But it's not just an office job he's going to. He's getting hit over and over and over again. That's a violent sport. So what his kids are thinking is not only is dad choosing whatever, but he's choosing a sport that could put him out for, we know about CTE. It, it, it worries me, and it would worry me as I'm going to play devil's Giselle, advocate, please. even though I agree with you. Right. You look at someone like those adrenaline chasers that are also putting their lives at risk, you know, and I've watched a lot of their documentaries, whether it's motocross or whether it's, you know, somebody else, even like an extreme skateboarder when they go on those really high verts, a ramp. Uh, they say, because they've been asked this question over and over again by like sports reporters, now that you have a child, are you going to stop doing this? Mm -hmm. And their answer is always the same. I wouldn't be myself if I weren't doing what I love. It doesn't mean I don't love my child right. or being a father, but they are doing something that is so ingrained in their passion that they might not be a whole person without it. Does that make sense? And scientifically, mm -hmm. they found that the adrenaline gene is an actual genetic component. So when you say inside of them, it might scientifically be a need that they have. So okay. I get Just that. Just curious, Let, yeah. Well, let's keep with that theme Final quickly. Thought. If adrenaline is a drug that floods your body and gives you euphoria, let's replace adrenaline with any other drug. Would you accept that if somebody said, hey, I'm a, look, I like to drink and I'm going to drink and you're like, this is separating you from your kids. It's inside of me. It's what I like. It mm, makes me whole. Fair. I, I think we're giving a lot of uh, no. I agree a with lot, you. A lot Believe of bandwidth me. There. If that was my spouse, I would feel the same way. But I just wanted to present the other side. Okay, so Halloween is right around the corner. Now, a new study says that half of Americans believe their house is haunted by a ghost. A third say they've actually seen something paranormal on their security cameras. Most say it's the image of a disembodied face. You're you're shaking your head. You believe in ghosts? You've seen a ghost? They were giving me notes in my ear. Oh. <laughs> does not believe no, it's, ghosts. it's a smudge on your screen it's not there's nothing that what narcissist you must be to think a ghost be hanging around your house because you're so interesting what about the footage we just saw uh, they asked for the opening in the house and a rock flew in it's on camera you can google it it just happened what about things like that it's a scientific principle called entropy it means that things are uh, capable of random disorder things fall from a higher gravity to a lower gravity so the idea of a rock falling on the floor is very plausible <laughs> Then why do I smell Done. my Oma's perfume and her hairspray, which were two completely obscure brands, and they're always surrounding me on like very 
tough moments of my life. Because your brain is telling you that no, to go. I smell it. Yes, but I smell your <laughs> your olfactory nerves. Yeah, your brain can make you Dude, smell where things are and we? make. Yeah, you I know. believe in it. What do you mean? Where are we? You I do, but these ghosts. words. Where do you? It was a Olfactory word of the day. Is the smell. <laughs> you, you, you believe in ghosts? Don't put this on me. You do not. I do. In I ghosts. do. Yeah. <sighs> Say ghosts again. <laughs> That's his favorite word. I do. Like do you think that you've word. seen a ghost? I haven't, but I would like to. Right. I'd like to be like, what's happening? What's what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what well, I would like to communicate a yeah. little bit. I don't know if I'd be totally scared. I would be like, maybe it's one of my family members yeah. coming down to visit me. So like, let's have a chat. Yeah. Okay. So how is it up there? Well, speaking of scary season, Good we've one. got a few viral videos that demonstrate just how scary the real world can be. First off, check out this plane in Paraguay that was struck by lightning, you guys. <coughs> it destroyed the front of the plane. Yeah, the plane has like no nose. But check out the video from the inside. <laughs> That's even more terrifying. As the plane flew through the storm, the lights flash on and off. Oh my gosh, then go completely dark. The lightning flashing in the windows as the whole plane shakes and shudders. How would you be able to, okay, now what would you I'm, do? Nobody's giving me notes, I'm shaking my head. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I'm scared, I don't know what is going on, but I'm like, the older I get, the more scared I get to fly, but I'm learning more about it. I'm not even joking, I give all of you permission, if we ever are flying and this happens, punch me right square in my face, so I do you not. You get out, You're, yeah, you I want, want out. Knock what if me I don't out. knock you out? You gotta really keep going, <laughs> you gotta <laughs> keep going, you gotta keep going. What if it's just turbulent? Yeah, no, but what I still, I want out, Even I don't like it. Notice what happened, the plane landed safely. I know, then you would have been knocked out That's with a concussion fine. and bruises. I would have woke up and be like, oh, it's over. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a couple yeah. shots just, for not living through that. I volunteer. Uh, okay, here's permission a, grant. Yes, here's a second viral video of a diver about to go for a swim in shark infested waters. But look at this as she puts her face in the water. She's in for a big surprise. Here we go. Right there, wow. Boom. No, 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 big no, 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 giant tiger shark right there. It bursts out of the water, mouth wide open. Now, the diver is reportedly used to swimming with tiger sharks, and in particular, that shark's name is Nikki. Oh, Nikki, Nikki and her are very good Stop friends. Stop naming these things that are going to bite your head off. Nikki is a friendly you, shark. That's, did that shark seem friendly He was it? saying, welcome to yeah, the ocean. Welcome Nikki. to my intestines. Nikki. How, that no. doesn't bother you. You're scared of, like, because whales, but big things in the water like that don't bother you? Doesn't scare me at all, sharks, at all. Yeah. I know. And a lot of you wrote me and said you're also scared of uh, whales and sharks, so I know there's a lot of you out there. Do you have a difference? I'm not scared Somebody of sharks. Somebody wrote you and said they're scared of whales? Several people. Several? Four. I, <laughs> that's Her enough. Mom. That's a lot. More than three. I could see people being, I mean, just when I feel like when I'm in the ocean, not the water, the ocean, I feel like I'm like uh, uh, like playing an away game. I feel like I'm on their turf. You are. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel like they could eat me. I feel like the mm -hmm. sea could take me away. And I'm just like, isn't there like a beach here? Here in a hotel back there. What am I doing in the you're water? Being played I'd yeah, you're being played I'd rather be in the water off. than up in the air, so can I punch you? If you're, you're both. <laughs> punch me, sing me down with the whales. You're both being played off.